Yo, what up? This is Jason, your boy, Zombie Collector, and uh, doing another video with a bunch of wrestling cards. So hopefully y'all will enjoy the experience and let it wash all over you. So first up is a Harland, and I'm not for sure what you call this card. It says so Premier Level. It's a tricolor, I think from last year, and you all might be thinking, why do you have this? Well, he ended up in AEW for a hot minute. He went by, I think, his real name, which I don't remember his real name, but he was kind of billed in, in WWE as the next Brock's, Brock Lex Lesnar, and he definitely was not. Um, he's a big guy. I think he played football, and so there were some similarities I guess, but he definitely uh, did not turn out um, to be much of anything with either company. I believe he's been let go by AEW at this point, but he was there. So I, I want to pick. I think this is this is his rookie card with uh, on the select card. So I picked it up, and um, so there you have it. Here we have Luke Gallows, who for about a year and change was with. Um, uh, Kenny Omega, him and his uh, partner, Carl Anderson, were with Impact Wrestling and AEW Impact had about a year's worth of like working together. And so Gall Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson was on AEW a whole lot. And then when their contract came up with Impact, they went back to WWE. Uh, I liked them. I thought I thought him and Carl Anderson had some good matches. I liked when they wrestled with, with Impact. I don't watch them really, like I said, in WWE because I don't watch WWE religiously. I'll catch her from, from time to time. But anyways, you have Luke Gallo sort of again just picking up. Look, he has that. It was like this Dirty Dom. And so anyways, there you have it. Luke Gallows, this is a Revolution Astro. And what, the one that I was, I was most excited about, I think I got all these like for a buck, like I said, a piece. Is the Ricky the Dragon Steamboat on the uh, and this is Ruby, um, uh, their variant Prism from this year's product. But again, huge uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat fan. Have been a fan of his since the olden days back in the eighties when I first uh, uh, ran into him when he was with WWF. I know he wrestled prior to that in NWA. And I want to say Mid Atlantic up in up in North Carolina area. I could be wrong. I know he's in the NWA for a while. And just recently, Ric Flair did an interview with uh, CVV uh, and Chris Van Vliet, and he said that probably his best wrestling partner, one of the best wrestlers he's ever locked up with, was the Dragon. And if you know anything about Ricky the Dragon, he was all he never he never played a heel. He always played a baby face. He was always this is an excellent wrestler. He didn't get as much love as he should have, maybe because he wasn't the best talker, and best, especially in a time where everybody was playing these over-the-top characters. He was a lot more um, calm and collect, and he was more of a wrestler than he was a, a personality or a character. He just was a great wrestler. He had a great physique, was a great-looking uh, guy out there on the ring, big guy, you know, muscular guy. But I just feel like he kind of always gets overshadowed by a lot of other guys during that time. Then we're gonna go to the, then we're gonna go to AEW Metal Universe, picking up a couple extra uh, uh, cards from there. Jay Lethal on the I want to say premium gold premium card. Uh, he just picked up a win against uh, Trey Trent Trent Beretta just a, to yesterday on on Rampage. I kind of feel bad because him and um, Jeff Jarrett uh, are showing up a lot, but especially Jay Lethal and losing a lot. He shockingly won yesterday, but Jay Lethal is a great wrestler. I, I first learned about him on Impact. He had a couple great promos over there, uh, being Black Mochismo, kind of being a uh, Randy Macho Man Savage uh, character. He did a promo off with Ric Flair, which was absolutely amazing. And I highly recommend if you've not seen, you just type in Jay Lethal Ric Flair promo, 
absolutely unbelievable. Probably the best promo I've ever seen, especially on Impact so, or TNA back in the day. So there's that. Um, we have a double, a double card here. On one side, we have Evil Uno and the Technician's card. And then the guy threw the Austin gun on the other side, Blue Parallel. And the guns now are being prominently featured with the Bang Bang Gang or the Gang Bang Bang. <laughs> if you know, you know. But uh, the uh, Bang Bang Gang and with uh, Rock Hard, Juice Robinson and Jay White. Switchblade, Jay White. And so uh, Colton and Austin Gunner is now with that group. And they're doing, they're having lots of uh, TV time. So good for them. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I do think they are pretty hilarious. And they have this really cool intro now with all four guys, like kind of like in a circle with the cameras coming around. And they all have like these things where they do where they're like spitting up the water, like mist, and they're doing their guns in the air. And it's just really cool looking, and then Juice, Juice Robinson's like laughing and acting manacle. Uh, so yeah, it was, it's pretty cool. Then we have uh, uh, Kenny Omega technician card. Uh, I mean, like I, I've said this before, I've never saw Kenny Omega until he showed up at AEW, which he was there from the beginning. And I've been a big fan of his uh, wrestling. I mean, he's a fantastic wrestler. I know right now people are saying he's one of the best, if not the best out there ever. I don't know if I'd go that far, but he's definitely up there. I mean, him and Brian Danielson, phew, I need all that all the time. Those guys just know how to wrestle. Talk about another guy who knows how to really wrestle, and he's starting to get, like, he's doing this uh, new gimmick where he's going, Adam! Roderick Strong. So, uh, Roderick Strong in the Ruby, I believe, Prism here from last year. He's now in AEW, next strong, next strong, but him and the kingdom are working, I guess, in a way to bring Adam Cole either down or they're working MJF as time, time will tell. And I liked Roger Strong the first time I saw him. He's only been in AEW for a couple of months, I think, maybe up to six months. He came in, was a friend of Adam Cole's and I think real life also was a friend of him back in NXT days. And he had some smaller wrestling like programs. I mean, when I saw him, I thought he was a great wrestler, but he didn't really do a lot. Unfortunately, he's kind of in the background again, kind of like what they did to Bobby Fish. Or Bobby Fish, I thought a great wrestler, but he just wasn't getting a lot of TV time. Unfortunately, well, they found a way to get him now TV time, and he's playing this character where he acts like his neck's been broke or is damaged, and he goes around saying he can't wrestle, but then he gets in the ring and wrestles, and he puts the the neck brace back on. And he always just screams at him, and uh, and Adam come, Adam Cole comes running basically. So it's a cool gimmick. It's probably the best gimmick he's ever had. He's getting the most TV time. They're, they've uh, done some vignettes, which have been great. Sorry, these the glare is not the glare. The old glare bear hashtag glare bear right there. But there you go. And then we have just a regular base of Malachi Black. I think I picked this up for, like I said, all these cards I got for a dollar a piece, I believe. I don't think I spent, my, well, here in a couple of, coming up, I think I have an autograph that I spent probably with ta with tax or with uh, shipping, like about eight bucks. But Malachi Black. Uh, I'll show, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and show this one, why not? Buddy Matt Murphy. I think he goes by Buddy Matthews in AEW now. But he's also part of House of Black. And this is an on-car autograph out of 50. This is number 20 out of 50. But this is a great card, buddy. Murphy, when he was in WWE. Um, but, yes, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. I really believe he's from Australia. He's the real-life boyfriend of Rhea Ripley, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, anyways, fantastic wrestler. He does not wrestle enough in AEW. And it makes me nuts. He had a ridiculous, goofy thing in WWE where he was hooking up with Rey Mysterio's daughter. And I don't know what all that was. I caught some of that because people were talking about it. It's kind of odd. And then he kind of disappeared and then just was let go. But unfortunately, he's not wrestling a lot right now. And when he does wrestle, he's wrestling a trios. 
Uh, and so you don't really see how good he is as a wrestler by himself, but I wish they would wrestle him more. But he is, again, has a great look, super uh, fit guy. Hopefully they'll get around to showing him some more. Then we got a DDP here. Uh, this is the Concourse Prism, the red, white, and blue. I think this is the best spot right here, right around this area for these cards. Uh, DDP is probably one of my favorite wrestlers, along with Sting from the WCW days. I wasn't a big fan of um, a lot of the Wolfpack and NWO stuff. I mean, some of the guys are, you know, they were so many of them coming in and out. So I kind of lost track of all that stuff as one thing a lot of us did. But I'm a big fan of DDP as a person. He's helped a lot of wrestlers with their health. You know, I think about Jake the Snake Roberts, one of the main ones, but, you know, Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, and, you know, countless others, I believe that uh, don't, don't, aren't coming to my mind. But anyways, you got DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, the Jersey Shore, where he's from. And this is a cool one here I picked up for maybe just a couple of schmeckles out of three ninety nine. This was from, I believe, the 2022 Scorpio Sky Green Parallel. Yeah, this must be the best spot to be for whatever reason right here. So I'm going to try to, probably right in front of my fat face, that's probably the best spot for it. So... Anyways, again, a green parallel, nothing really special. I just did not have it, and I needed it. I'm not the biggest Scorpio Sky fan, but when I can find these kind of cards for just a couple dollars, I will grab them just to try to put the sets together as I can. Next up is a Revolution uh, Astro of Rowdy Rowdy Piper. is a great Piper. It's, you don't really see Piper this jacked. Piper always had like a, like more like an athletic, like, you know, uh, build, like, you know, just kind of, you know, he had muscles and he had a, you know, a decent build, but he wasn't super muscular. But this here shows him super jacked. So I don't know when this, this says 1984, maybe he was that jacked in 84, but he looks pretty jacked here. But, you know, Piper was never one of those ones that looked intimidating um, as far as his physique. Uh, he was a great wrestler, but he never was overtly muscular. Again, he was more like the the quarterback, you know, four or five years after, he, you know, his college days or something, kind of physique, where you could tell he hadn't, you know, he worked out and he was in shape, but he was overtly muscular. But that was a good one here. Here's the more uh, Piper that you kind of know right here with the kilt on, with the whole hot rod right there. From Scott, Bill from Scotland, even though he is from Canada. I don't even think he's actually was even born or had anything to do with Scotland, to be honest. Other than I think that may be where he, where he was from originally, like family, like family tree. But anyways, uh, this is a revolution from Revolution. Also from 2023 Legends card. It's a good looking card. You can see lots of the glare right there. And then the... And then the last one here is a Relic card from Worlds Collide NXT UK, 223 and a 299. I mentioned it earlier, Bobby Fish Relic card. You now own an authentic Next Worlds Collide or NXT Worlds Collide event use Matt Relic from January 25th, 2020. If you can see there, there's the number... I don't know where it is. Yeah, it's like right underneath there. Like right there. So, anyway, so there you have that. So, that's the Bobby Fish card. You know, he, he kind of left uh, AEW in a not the best way, considering he had a falling out with uh, everybody then favorite wrestler, uh, uh, CM Punk. Him and Punk did not get along, and so he kind of had an unceremoniously let go because everybody who had to appease Punk because, you know, Punk is a crybaby. He can't handle anyone who gives him a hard way to go. But anyways, he was let go. He showed up at, I think, Impact, and now he's gone. So I don't know where he's at. But uh, now it's kind of showing that Bobby Fish was correct in his evaluation and uh, thoughts about Punk now that we see it in high insight. So anyways, guys, that is it. Thank you for watching. Let me know how you all think I did below. Comments, of course, likes, shares, subscribe, of course. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.